Agada, Jewish Babylonian Aramaic Agadita, Tales, Law. Place Agadot, Ashkenazi pronunciation Agados refers to non-legalistic exegetical texts in the classical rabbinic literature of Judaism, particularly as recorded in the Talmud and Midrash. In general, Agadah is a compendium of rabbinic texts that incorporates folklore, historical anecdotes, moral exhortations, and practical advice in various spheres, from business to medicine. In terms of etymology, the cognate Hebrew, Haggadah means, telling, while the Aramaic root grand as well as ngd, from which gdh may arise has the dual implication of expanding, drawing out, and binding, drawing in. Correspondingly, the Agada may be seen as those teachings which communicate rabbinic traditions to the reader, simultaneously expanding their understanding of the text, while strengthening their religious experience and spiritual connection. The root also has the meaning, flow, and here relates to the transmission of ideas. As part of the Jewish oral law, The Agadah is part of Judaism's oral law TWRHSBLPH, the traditions providing the authoritative interpretation of the written law. In this context, the widely held view in rabbinic literature is that the Agadah is in fact a medium for the transmission of fundamental teachings, homiletic sayings, mmrim limdium, or for explanations of verses in the Tanakh, exegetic sayings. In rabbinic thought, therefore, much of the Agadah is understood as containing a hidden, allegorical dimension, in addition to its overt, literal sense. In general, where a literal interpretation contradicts rationality, the rabbis seek an allegorical explanation. We are told to use our common sense to decide whether an Agadah is to be taken literally or not. Carmel, 2005. Topic: Literal allegorical teachings. Rabbi Moshe Haim Luzato, the Ramchal, discusses this two-tiered literal allegorical mode of transmission of the Agadah in his well-known discourse on the Haggadot. He explains that the oral law, in fact, comprises two components: the legal component, HLQHMZWWT, discussing the mitzvot and halakha, and the secret. Component, HLQHSWEDO discussing the deeper teachings. The Agadah, along with the Kabbalah, falls under the latter. The rabbis of the Mishnahich era believed that it would be dangerous to record the deeper teachings in explicit, Mishnah like, medium. Rather, they would be conveyed in a concealed mode and via paradoxes. Due to their value, these teachings should not become accessible to those of bad character, and due to their depth they should not be made available to those not schooled in the ways of analysis. This mode of the transmission was nevertheless based on consistent rules and principles such that those equipped with the keys would be able to unlock their meaning, to others they would appear as non-rational or fantastic. Topic. Interpretation of the Agada. In line with the above, Samuel ibn Nagrila, in his Introduction to the Talmud, states that Agada comprises any comment occurring in the Talmud on any topic which is not a commandment, i.e., which is not halachic, and one should derive from it only that which is reasonable. As regards this, Maimonides, in his preface to the eleventh chapter of Tractate Sanhedrin Perikchelik, describes three possible approaches to the interpretation of the Agada. The first approach is to accept the Agada as literally true, without admission of any hidden, allegorical explanation—even where a literal interpretation runs counter to common sense. Maimonides is dismissive of this approach. 
The second approach is to assume that anything said by the sages was intended literally, and to therefore reject, as impossible, non-rational or fantastic teachings and to consequently consider the sages as simpletons and ignoramuses. Maimonides does not entirely reject rationalist interpretation, but he opposes an exegetical approach which denies the Agada a hidden rationality. The sages presented their drashot in a style by which the mind of a fool will reject them because of his way of thinking, it is improper to assign any deficiency to the drash. One may rather suspect that the deficiency is a result of his intellectual shortcomings. Commentary on the Mishnah, Introduction The third approach is to recognize that many Agadot are intended to teach profound truths, and that the teachings thus operate on two levels, overt and hidden. Thus any impossible assertion was, in fact, intended as a parable. Further, where Agadot can be understood literally, they may be taken on this level. This is, in general, the view of the rabbis. It is proper, to carefully analyze the Agadot, when any of these seem far-fetched we must immerse ourselves in the various branches of knowledge until we understand the concepts. Maimonides, op cit, note that Maimonides' approach is also widely held amongst the non-rationalistic, mystical streams of Judaism. Thus, for example, Rabbi Isaiah Horowitz, the Shla HaKodosh holds that None of these sometimes mind-boggling stories are devoid of profound meaning, if anyone is devoid of understanding, it is the reader. Schnee Luchos Habris, Introduction In the Talmud and Midrash The Agada is today recorded in the Midrash and the Talmud. In the Midrash, the Agadich and Halakich material are compiled as two distinct collections, one. The Agadich Midrashim, generally, are explanatory Agada, deriving the sermonic implications from the biblical text, and two the Halakich Midrashim derive the laws from the text. Many of the Torah commentaries, and the Targumim, interpret the Torah text in the light of Agadic statements, particularly those in the Midrash, and hence contain much material on Agadah interpretation. Throughout the Talmud, Agadic and Halakic material are interwoven. Legal material comprises around 90%. Tractate Avath, which has no Gemara, deals exclusively with non Halakic material, though it is not regarded as a Gardic in that it is focused, largely, on character development. The Talmudic Agada, generally, convey the deeper teachings, though in concealed mode, as discussed. The Agadic material in the Babylonian Talmud is also presented separately in Ein Yaakov, a compilation of the Agada together with commentaries. Well-known works interpreting the Agadot in the Talmud include Chidashe Agados Novelli on the Agadot by Samuel Edel's The Maharsha. Chidashe Agados Novelli on the Agadot by Judah Lowe The Maharal as well as many other works by Lo, especially Bear Ha Gola. Yehoyada and Mechabzil names based on 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 20 by Yosef Hayam, the Benish Chai. Beragados, clarification of the Agadot and Perish al Kamar Agadot, commentary on several Agadot by the Vilna Gaon. Ayan Aya commentary on Ein Yaakov by Rav Kook. N. Jacob Ein Yaakov, Agada of the Babylonian Talmud by Rabbi Jacob ibn Habib, revised and translated into English by Rabbi S. H. Z. V. I. Hirsch Glick, copyright 1916. <laughs> <laughs> development The Agada has been preserved in a series of different works, which, like all works of traditional literature, have come to their present form through previous collections and revisions. Their original forms existed long before they were reduced to writing. 
The first traces of the Midrashic exegesis are found in the Bible itself, while in the time of the Sophorim the development of the Midrash Agada received a mighty impetus, and the foundations were laid for public services which were soon to offer the chief medium for the cultivation of Bible exegesis. Much Agada, often mixed with foreign elements, is found in the Apocrypha, the Pseudepigrapha, the works of Josephus and Philo, and the remaining Judeo-Hellenistic literature, but Agadic exegesis reached its highest development in the great epoch of the Mishnich Talmudic period, between 100 and 550 CE. The Agada of the Amoraim sages of the Talmud is the continuation of that of the Tanaim sages of the Mishnah. The final edition of the Mishnah, which was of such signal importance for the Halakha, is of less significance for the Agada, which, in form as well as in content, shows the same characteristics in both periods. <laughs> <laughs> Exegetic and homiletic Agada It is important to emphasize the fundamental difference in plan between the Midrashim forming a running commentary to the scripture text, and the homiletic Midrashim when the scholars undertook to edit, revise, and collect into individual Midrashim the immense array of Haggadot, they followed the method employed in the collections and revisions of the Halakot and the Halakic discussions. The form which suggested itself was to arrange in textual sequence the exegetical interpretations of the biblical text as taught in the schools, or the occasional interpretations introduced into public discourses, etc., and which were in any way connected with scripture. Since the work of the editor was often merely that of compilation, the existing midrashim show in many passages the character of the sources from which they were taken. This was the genesis of the Midrashim which are in the nature of running Haggadic commentaries to single books of the Bible, as Bereshit Rabbah, Ika Rabati, the Midrashim to the other Megillot, etc. See Midrash for more details. <laughs> <laughs> Modern compilations The Ein Yaakov is a compilation of the Agadic material in the Babylonian Talmud together with commentary. It was compiled by Jacob ibn Habib and after his death by his son Rabbi Levi ibn Habib, and was first published in Saloniki, Greece in 1515. It was intended as a text of Agada, that could be studied with the same degree of seriousness as the Talmud itself. Popularized anthologies did not appear until more recently. These often incorporate Agadot from outside of classical rabbinic literature. The major works include Sefer Har Agada, the Book of Legends, is a classic compilation of Agada from the Mishnah, the two Talmuds, and the Midrash literature. It was edited by Chaim Naaman Bialik and Yehoshua Hanna Ravnitsky. Bialik and Ravnitsky worked for three years to compile a comprehensive and representative overview of Agada. When they found the same Agada in multiple versions, from multiple sources, they usually selected the later form, the one found in the Babylonian Talmud. However, they also presented some Agadot sequentially, giving the early form from the Jerusalem Talmud, and later versions from the Babylonian Talmud, and from a classic Midrash compilation. In each case every Agada is given with its original source. In their original edition, they translated the Aramaic Agadot into modern Hebrew. Sefer Har Agada was first published in 1908-11 in Odessa, Russia, then reprinted numerous times in Israel. In 1992 it was translated into English as the Book of Legends, by William G. Broad. Legends of the Jews, by Rabbi Louis Ginsberg, is an original synthesis of a vast amount of Agada from the Mishnah, the two Talmuds and Midrash. Ginsberg had an encyclopedic knowledge of all rabbinic literature, and his masterwork included a massive array of Agadot. However he did not create an anthology which showed these Agadot distinctly. 
Rather, he paraphrased them and rewrote them into one continuous narrative that covered five volumes, followed by two volumes of footnotes that give specific sources. Mimikor Yisrael, by Misha Joseph Berdachevsky. Berdachevsky was interested in compiling the folklore and legends of the Jewish people, from the earliest times up until the dawn of the modern era. His collection included a large array of agadot, although they were limited to those he considered within the domain of folklore. The Collected Works of Dove Noy. In 1954, Noy established the Israel Folktale Archives and Ethnological Museum at the University of Haifa, an archive containing over 23,000 folktales collected from all the various ethnic communities who live in Israel. Topic. See also Agardich Midrashim category Midrash Moses in Rabbinic Literature Pards Jewish Exegesis Rabbinic Literature <laughs>